Last time I talked about the Peng Shui situation, it was Wednesday. And at that point, more and more people were speaking out and asking, where is Peng Shui? And at that point, we had not seen proof that she was indeed alive. Now, I can't say I expected that she wasn't, but nonetheless, the fact that it took so long for everyone to at least get the privilege of seeing her alive was appalling. Uh, but, but we did. And at this point, it's time to update the story because we've now seen Peng Shui in public via a couple of videos put out by Chinese state-affiliated media. Uh, they were once again comically staged. There was one video where the camera just lingered on a calendar that showed what date it was to verify that the video was indeed shot on the day that it claimed to be. There was another video where they were eating dinner and the person with Peng Shui just randomly brought up the date like, oh yeah, this is this is normal. This isn't staged video. Uh, she also showed up at a, a junior tennis event. Uh, maybe it wasn't a junior, but some sort of tennis tournament she made an appearance at. Uh, however, while it's great to see that she's alive. She's still clearly not free. Steve Simon has not spoken with her. And people in WTA circles, her close friends, most recently I saw Michael Joyce talk about this, uh, uh, a coach, a WTA coach, nobody's been able to reach her. So clearly she doesn't have privilege to access her phone. She doesn't have her freedom. But obviously the Chinese... Communist Party needed to do something to quiet everyone down and to at least show everyone that she was alive. At the very least, it was the bare minimum. I mean, if that didn't happen, this story was only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the way, it worked because less and less people are starting to talk about Peng Shui right now, which is why it's worth talking about where we lie now in the situation. Peng Shui, still not free. So the hashtag has gone from where is Peng Shui to free Peng Shui? But in this case, I'm a little bit worried about the power of those efforts. I think that there should be an effort to make sure that the movement doesn't go away because nobody who accuses anyone of sexual assault should be met with the loss of personal freedom. And I don't care about the details of the allegations because I've gotten some comments about that. I've gotten some comments that have to do with the validity of her allegations. Nobody cares about the validity of her allegations right now. Right now, the problem is that when a woman speaks out, when a woman tells their truth, they should not face any consequence unless it can be proven that they are maliciously lying. And in this case, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty clear that that's not the issue here with Peng Shui. She's lost her personal liberty not because not because she's maliciously lied about a sexual assault. She's lost her personal li liberty because she's told her honest truth. So I don't know what the long term is for her exactly. But what Steve Simon is asking for is never going to happen. Steve Simon is asking that or demanding. And he actually did the same thing in an interview. He said, this is what we're asking. And then he said, actually, this is what we're demanding. So this is what he's demanding. He's demanding that Peng Shui's allegations not be censored. And he's demanding that they are properly investigated. Again, there's seemingly a sub-zero chance that that's going to happen. And for Steve Simon to make that the, the terms of, of business, 
For Steve Simon to make that the terms, it makes it sound like he's already made up his mind and that he would rather not mend this relationship and he'd rather move on from the relationship. Really unprecedented stuff as none of the major sports organizations have done that, done this. And by the way, obviously with the Olympics coming up uh, in about six months from now, Thomas Bach of the IOC also did a video conference with Peng Shui and spoke with her for 30 minutes and then released a statement about how she's okay and she's home and everything's fine. Um, Thomas Bach is clearly in the pocket of, and, and his interest is the same as the Chinese Communist Party's interest, which is making this public you-know-what storm go away so that it will look better so that the IOC won't be slammed for holding their Olympics in China. I believe that is the goal of the IOC. It is to do PR. It is to do damage control for China to make them look better. And by the way, Jean Gaoli, the vice premier who Peng Shui accused of sexual assault, was part of the committee that convinced the IOC to hold the Olympics in Beijing, part of whatever committee deals with that kind of negotiation or that campaign, meaning there's literally pictures of Thomas Bach and Zheng Gao Li together uh, in conference rooms. I mean, clearly, you know, the IOC is not where to look uh, for, for anyone making a stand. But uh, what's going to be interesting is how this plays out for the WTA. They have to find other markets, in my opinion. I don't think the Chinese, I don't think they will be in China anymore. I think mutually that bridge has been burned. I don't think China has interest in hosting the WTA, and I don't think the WTA has interest in going to China. I think it goes both ways. So, what will the result of this be? I think they're going to lose some money. But at the end of the day, these large corporations. Most of them have some money to lose, which makes it all that eyebrow raising that nobody has been willing to lose any with China. I want to end on this. There's a tragedy here, and I know I have been throughout this whole situation and covering this event very much in favor of the WTA, taking hardline stances against the Chinese Communist Party when it comes to Peng Shui. Um, first, calling for them to address the situation head on, publicly. Then, calling for them to threaten pulling events. Now I'm here to tell you, I predict that that is happening. I predict that that will happen, that there will not be the WTA in China. That is my feeling. Uh, but throughout all of this, I still think there's a tragedy, which is that Chinese tennis fans are going to lose the sport, um, locally speaking at least, or by the way, the way that China is you know, willing to censor media, uh, who knows, they could lose the sport in bigger ways than just the local tournaments. Uh, will the Chinese professionals continue to get funding from the Chinese Tennis Association? Will the government continue to, to fund a tennis association? Do they have interest in that? Will they in the future? So it's tragic that what's happened here is going to be of consequence to Chinese tennis fans and probably millions of them that just don't deserve this. I'm sad about that. From where is Peng Shui to free Peng Shui. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.